Well, this is probably far and away the worst possible day to come and show this pump track. It's blowing a gale, there's thunderstorms uh, forecast, it's rained a little bit on the way here. I should have stopped a kilometre back at the Oxford Street shops in uh, Leaderville and just had a coffee there for a while. When you can see here, this area here is just completely flooded. Uh, so let's hope the track is not as wet as that. Well, thankfully it's not that wet anymore. It's blue skies at the moment. I did shoot this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, thankfully, the track is not under that flooded area. It starts up here in these trees. And you can see there's uh, ovals on the other side of it. So this isn't a terribly wide stretch of, uh, of bush here that they've put this track through. And you can just see the, the white stuff on the other side of the logs. That's the track. So they've obviously put all the, uh, the stuff they've cut down here along the edge of the track as a marker and you can see some of the damage the storm's done with all the junk on the path and the occasional broken branches. Uh, but that's it, that's the track over there and this does go for a few hundred metres. Well you can see here how narrow this strip of land is. You know that's, uh, if you want to put a road through there, uh, you probably have about one lane in each direction. Um, you know you can see the green grass on the other side. So it's, it's like this a lot of the way along. Uh, you know, very narrow, but they've uh, managed to wind it in between these trees and retain the big trees here. And looking from here, I actually went past this track quite a few times before I actually noticed it was here. That's how unobtrusive it is. And this will just give you a feel for actually how tricky it is to see because there's quite a bit of dense vegetation along the edge of the track and you can't see what's on this on the other side of it if you're just looking casually you actually have to look fairly carefully to see that there's a track across there now we've come to the end uh, and the other end of the, the track is in this car park well it's not so windy now but the rain's coming down not too heavy so we'll carry on and you can see behind me here there's this green open space there's a, a pavilion or a, a grandstand of some sort there's a car park here for i don't know 20 or 30 cars and the start, or one of the starts of the, uh, the pump track, is right behind me where that gate is. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to use the rear camera because my front camera got covered in water and you can't see much. So, sorry about that. Well, that was a slightly unexpected entry into the track area. Now, what they've done is they've surfaced it with this stuff. It's, uh, it's like sandstone or limestone. Uh, it's, it's very crumbly. You can see already just from giving a bit of a rub I've got this white sandy stuff on my, my fingers. Uh, they use this as the, the base for um, all the new shared parts over here in Perth. It's quite good. I guess it compacts down really well with a, a you know, whacker thing and uh, provides a firm foundation. So all they've done here is they've just laid it out and smoothed it off I guess. And, and that's the track. Uh, now it, it is a different colour to the, to the natural dirt here which is grey so it does stand out but you know that's why I think I've ridden past here half a dozen times and, and never seen it because I, I know it looks like it doesn't blend in but it does blend in. Well I Wondering why I was having so much trouble finding the track as I came through there. It seemed to be a lot more difficult than when I did it the other day. And I then realised it was the storm that's been through because what's happened is, see that? There's just heaps and heaps of, of uh, twigs and sticks and leaves, etc., that have blown down in the last couple of days. And en there's enough of it to slightly obscure the track um, and, and just make it even more camouflage than it normally is. So yes, it's gone from blending in quite well to blending in very well. Now that drop off might not seem like much. You know, it doesn't, well, doesn't quite come up to my knee but I've got to tell you yeah, if you're uh, not used to doing this kind of stuff that can be rather interesting um, and look just they've set up some little jumps around the way unfortunately the camera really doesn't do it justice but I've just lent my bike up against that one to give an idea of the, the size so 
you know, if you really get some speed up, you can zoom up there and try and jump across that little gap. I'm not going to demonstrate that. So you can see in between the trails, it's kind of undisturbed ground where uh, you know, the bush will grow up. And over this little bump, whee! That's pretty tricky to do one-handed. Uh-oh, there's a series of them. Ah! Whoop, 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 ah! <laughs> my arm axe is a very good stabiliser there. <laughs> Damn it. And you can see there's the opposite trail there, so it's just a, a loop, you know, you can do it in one direction. And when oh well, there's a pump track over there by the good. I'll have to go over there and have a look at that in a minute. Well, that was a complete rookie mistake on that one. Particularly trying to do it one-handed was pretty silly. You can just see there's a, there's a log there. It's not that big. Um, nice size log for a bonfire, I guess. And they put a little ramp there, which I completely missed. And it's all just about having enough speed, getting over it, launching properly and landing properly. Uh, you know, it's good to practice that kind of stuff. Doing it one-handed with uh, the other hand on the camera, though, is a really dumb idea. Don't try this at home, kids. Like I said before, sorry about it being the rear camera, but you could see from one shot that the front camera was a bit mucked up from all the rain that day. Um, now, I'm not going to show you the rest of the park. It's quite large for people in Five Dock. Think of Timbrel Park, you know, with multiple sports grounds. Uh, and there are oh, probably at least four to six soccer pitches here. I didn't count them. It's you know quite large. It's got a massive car park attached to it. It's got cricket nets and, and all sorts of things. So this little pump track is just a small sliver of uh, of the land here. It's maybe I don't know five percent of the total area of the park is taken up by this, and it's a great facility for kids. Uh, I guess from a young age up through to teenagers. It's not a challenging mountain bike track by any means. There's a few you know fun bits to do, but it's. It's not technical, it doesn't have big log drop-offs, it doesn't have rocky gardens and, and it's not super twisty and it doesn't have any uphill or downhill, it's completely flat. But you know, it's great fun and I really wish uh, Council and Heritage New South Wales would get their act together and finish whatever the hell they're doing in, uh, in Timberwall Park with investigations there and re-establish the track along these grounds because this is great. This is a, you know just a fantastic thing for kids to get out and do, and we should have more of it.